there, Ned Luberecki here for True Fire. This month's lesson topic is rhythm. Now, playing rhythm on the banjo can mean a couple of different things. A lot of times, while the band is playing, the way the banjo keeps rhythm is by playing a roll. The typical way that banjo players play rhythm when they're not playing lead or playing an open roll like that is by doing something called vamping. Banjo, well, in the banjo world, vamping is this style of backup where you play the downbeat with your thumb, you play the upbeat with your fingers, and then kind of mute the chord so that you get that boom, click, boom, click, boom, click sound. Now, if you want to learn more about vamping, I covered uh, the beginning basics of vamping in my beginning bluegrass banjo series here on True Fire, and I also covered a little bit more about vamping and a few variations of it uh, in my uh, bluegrass banjo backup course here on True Fire. But today, I want to go into something that's a little bit different, and that is to do sort of a rhythmic vamping style that's in a boogie-woogie style. This is almost reminiscent of stride piano or boogie-woogie piano, and it's what I was doing here when you uh, caught me. It was this. Now this uh, style of backup is going to fit something that's more in 4-4 time. Bluegrass is often played in like 2-4 time. 1-2-1-2. In this case we're going 1-2-3-4. Uh, long bars like that and if you're playing something that's really bluesy or uh, something that's in a little maybe a more of a country shuffle kind of sound this could be uh, useful in those kind of situations so here's how you do it I'm playing it out of the F chord position now, I'm doing it in a G chord right now but if you know your three chord shapes on the banjo there's the F position the bar position and the D position or what they're commonly referred to the F chord shape or F chord position here for the banjo is one that's really useful for playing a lot of different things because it's the one that puts the root note of the chord on the bass string so in this case my root note is that G note on the one beat of this uh, of this lick I'm playing the second and third strings together with my index and middle fingers so I'm kind of going now on the first beat, I'm hitting the two strings and then I'm, I'm lifting my fingers off so that I get kind of a percussive sound. Well, at least a staccato sound. So I'm actually kind of just squeezing when I play that note. And then the second one, I let it ring a little bit more and I follow it up with my thumb on the fourth string. So it's a ba da da that's the, that's the rhythm I'm going for. Ba da da the next step is to play the bar chord shape right here at the fifth fret. So I'm using the same hand position and I'm just laying my ring finger straight across. So I'm playing the same two strings, second and third strings, and getting the same rhythmic sound. So I'm playing the ba, da, da, and then sort of roll my finger over to grab that last note. So ba, da, 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 da. The next one, I'm gonna play the first two strings at the third fret. So the chord I'm actually making, is a G seventh chord, so I'm going da 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 da, and I'm always coming back to that G note on the fourth string, and then I follow it up by going back to the fifth fret, and that comes out to be four beats. I'm doing it as one, two, three, four, one. Now, if I want to change chords on that, the one, four, five chord progression, I always want to make sure that on my first beat, I am already in the new chord. So if I go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Now there's a variation of this that I like to call the Sesame Street lick. You'll recognize it right away. It's the one that goes, same position and I'm playing the da 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 when I get up to here da, 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 my next one on my four beat I'm going back and forth between the fifth fret the third fret of the first two strings and back to the fifth fret so it's and there's only so fast that you'll be able to do this so you're always going to keep this at a really moderate or medium tempo it's not something that you'll do at a bluegrass breakdown speed Get 
that as a hammer on. Sometimes it works better than others. So that's a couple of boogie woogie piano licks that you can kind of uh, you can kind of adapt to the banjo. There's another one that I like to use where I go. one uh, again sounds sort of like boogie woogie piano there are a lot of blues guitar licks that kind of go like this the way I'm doing it is that once again I'm playing it out of the F chord shape but I'm sort of starting it from a bar chord shape here at the third uh, third fret I can I can sort of get that fourth string in there if I want to but most of the time I'm just playing the first or the second and third strings and I'm barring them both at the third fret and then I'm hammering on from the B flat to the B note on the third string and then landing on that fourth string so it's like a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So it comes in on the ando. The, uh, the hammer on is the one beat. One, that hammer fourth string third and second strings at the fifth fret back to the hammer on this one will take a little bit of time for you to get used to with your left hand if you're not used to playing things like that because holding that bar chord can kind of tire your hand out a little bit and also you might not be used to getting that that much sound out of a hammer on so take a little bit of time and practice it you can do it uh, as, as a standalone as part of that other boogie woogie lick. So here's what I'm doing. I'm playing the hammer on. Da, 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 da. And if I do play the fourth string, it does it gives me a little seventh note there on the bottom. Boogie Woogie, piano, uh, I almost said piano playing, banjo playing that is stolen from piano playing. I hope this is something that's useful to you, and uh, please, I invite you to check out my other offerings here on True Fire. I have a course for beginners. I have one for bluegrass banjo backup. I have 30 licks you must know for bluegrass banjo, and then I have the Jam Session Survival Tips, uh, the Jam Session Survival Guide. So uh, check those all out right here on True Fire, and come visit me anytime you want to at nedski.com. That's N-E-D-S-K-I, nedski.com. I'll see you there, and uh, hopefully, hopefully see you out on the road sometime soon. Take care.